Bible student, uh, probably from seven, eight years old. But I was very fortunate. My pastor in Baltimore, Marcus Garvey Wood, was a fellow student with Dr. King at Crozier Theological Seminary. Uh, they were, at that time, they selected, I think, 11 or 12 black students from around America to come to Crozier mm -hmm. to get uh, master's or doctor's graduate degrees in theology, and Reverend Wood was one of them. And after finishing, he was called to Baltimore, to Providence. So I was very blessed to be in an environment with a forward-thinking theologian who was a progressive. That's why I wound up in the Jack Robinson Youth Council of NAACP. That's why I was in an environment with Herbert Marshall and Miss Jackson and those kinds of minds that would introduce us to the world of the mind. So I was very fortunate there. Uh, and that wasn't because of my parents. It was because when Reverend Wood came to Baltimore, his brother lived across the street from my family. And his sister-in-law knocked on doors to try to get kids for the Sunday school. And she happened to knock on our door and ask my parents, would they mind if their son went to Sunday school? And my mother said, no, not at all. And I had no idea. I was being ushered into a very progressive, forward-thinking world of black social justice thought, uh, where, where the civil rights movement was on the front burner, and now people's rights and mm -hmm. job rights and education. And so I was taught faith from that perspective and not from fear and hell and devil. And that's not how I was raised in the church. So I was blessed with that even. And it was a very rounded um, educational process in my church. People think I came out of gospel like a little boy in a gospel choir. The first song I ever sang in church was Fred Waring in the Pennsylvania the Night Before Christmas. Wow. Oh, I had a solo in the Night Before Christmas. Miss Marion Smith, who was over the youth choir, was over the Baltimore Public Schools Black Division Music Department. And uh, we sang anthems and Negro spirituals a cappella. Uh, so I was very blessed that once again I was introduced to the mind, to the world of the mind and enlightenment. And we were, we were challenged to think and to ask questions about who did we think God was and, and how did we relate to God. And so that was a real blessing to be in that environment. I didn't start hearing about uh, homosexuality and hell and devil until I started singing gospel. I never heard that in my church wow. or from my pulpit. Oh, my God. Now, that wow. was Amazing. never there. Now, isn't there, a, like, kind of a conspiracy or, like, some type of, you know, saying, you know, uh, serving the Lord as a gay man? Was that difficult? Like, what kind of advice would you give, you know, to the younger LGBT community out there that is, you know, LGBT and wants to still serve the Lord? I would say today, make sure that you give your chance, yourself the opportunity to view God from many perspectives. Today there are things, in my day there weren't, today there are many books uh, by black theologians, uh, you know, uh, there are many progressive books to be read. Right. There, today, there are so many uh, embracing churches and denominations. Uh, the United Church of Christ, there are black churches that embrace their gay members. There are ordained gay and lesbian people in many of the mainline churches. So I would say to any of them, don't feel trapped in one environment Give yourself permission to explore spirituality in Christianity even broader than maybe where you were raised or what you were introduced to, because there is a great diversity today from which to glean. You don't have to be stuck uh, as it were 30, 40 years ago and not thinking that thinking that everyone thought the same way, everyone felt the same way. Today there are ordained bishops in major denominations. There are, you know, all kinds of embracing theologies. So, venture out and 
and and give yourself the opportunity to be present in different environments, read other people's writings that are progressive theologians, hear different voices, don't just listen to uh, voices that are degrading and abusive. Uh, that, that's the most important thing I can say to young people today. Uh, afford yourself the opportunity to live in a diverse world with diverse thinkers, and that has to come from you. You have to be willing to open yourself up to diversity and to hear different concepts of how people view God. And especially today within Christendom, you have so many choices within Christendom today. You're not just in a box where people think one way anymore. You don't have to just be locked in. You can venture out today and come up with different perspectives and many ways of viewing God and knowing God. And most of all, uh, in, in absolutely internalizing your journey, knowing God for yourself, how, what's your journey with God? There's a time when we have to move beyond what someone else said. How does your walk with God manifest in your world from day to day? Because that's where you're going to find your freedom. When you, when you pray, do you get answers? When, when you feel God's presence, or if you tell someone, I felt God was with me, or that God got in me, when you can't just say that, you have to know that, lean on that, and declare that, and feel good about what you're saying, and not let anyone say, oh, but God is, no, no, that may be how you feel God is, but this is what he did for me lately. What was Janice's uh, record? This is what he did for me lately. My God. And you have to stand on that and, and be bold about that journey as opposed to trying to make yourself fit someone else's um, idea of what the divine presence is or how it operates in the world. Because I think that's what gets us in more trouble than anything as human beings is us trying to make ourselves fit someone else's description of what is good and what's not good and what you should wear. Right. Uh, wow. you, it gets back to who am I and how do I feel. And, and that's the golden key to life itself. Wow. Amazing. Then you don't get caught in group dynamics. We, we're too easily caught in group dynamics and we want to follow what the group says and that keeps us in trouble. The bottom line is if I'm standing here alone, what kind of human being is Carl Bain going to be? Am I going to be loving? Do I believe in, in forgiveness? Do I believe in compassion, care, sharing with my fellow human beings? If that's where I stand, then I've got to walk in my belief. It has nothing to do with what everybody else is thinking and feeling. It has to do with where I stand, because in the end, that's it for all of us. When we crawl, we crawl alone. You know, when we have to make those life decisions, it's things we have to make in our own selves. Right, right. So real happiness has to come from within without. And so being grounded in the truth of who you are is the secret to living a happy life, period. Wow. Powerful. Very powerful. All right. <laughs> let's, let's let's move on to discussing the early AIDS epidemic. What was your opinion? What was your experience like? Well, I had um, heard about this grid, gay related immunodeficiency syndrome. I'd heard about it, but it was not really clear. People were just kind of well, it wasn't clear for anyone then. So people were getting bits and pieces and trying to put it together and make it make sense. But everything I was hearing was white. It was it was pictures of white people. It was I think I saw this thing on either Us magazine, which was uh, comparable to people, and it showed a white guy from the village who was uh, an impersonator that they would call illusionist. And it showed a picture of him healthy, and then it showed a picture of him after having lost a lot of weight. And I remember seeing that in the supermarket, leaving the supermarket here in Los Angeles. 
and I kept hearing white, white, white. So I, I said, let me go and see what information I could get on this. Because when my friends from New York were called, they would say, so and so is sick, and it might be a friend from, from Alvin Ailey's dance troupe, or it might be a friend from the dance theater of Harlem. And these were black folk, but I wasn't seeing anything about them. So when I start, tried to glean as much information as I could, and in that process, I got stats from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, and in those stats, there was this mind-boggling information uh, for blacks. It talked about black women, brown women, black babies, brown babies, and that stopped me cold. Everything I'd seen in the press was white gay men, but now when I started trying to find out about what the disease was, how it was transmitted, uh, what was the truth about it and not truth, now come these stats say, about my people saying these black women, there's a percentage of black women with this virus, but this ain't got nothing to do with gay. There's a percentage of black babies being born with this virus. This ain't got nothing to do with gay. So now my conscience is really pricked. And I want to delve into whatever information I can find. And that troubled me deeply. And that drove me to get all the information I could get. And then when I started, after having sung gospel and having been in this 98% gay environment, knowing all the players, all the big preachers, all the secrets, all that stuff that I knew, Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now I'm hearing is these horrendous sermons from Sodom and Gomorrah, and you're just going to write black, same day the loving people off, and use these verses to throw them away. And that's when whatever that is inside of me stood up and I said, oh, hell no, this ain't going down like this. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even tell you what it was. was, All I knew is I just wasn't going to have it. (laughs) It was like, no. So, wow. you know, and friends of mine who I love dearly were getting sick, and these are people who had, their whole lives were singing gospel. And these are people that I knew had driven up and down the road in those cars with made top tires and not enough gas and, and inhaling gas fumes in the car, almost killing themselves to get to the next church to sing black people happy and to make them, help them get over the struggles of the civil rights. And now you just go on, throw these guys away. And I said, I don't know what I can do, but whatever it is, I'm getting ready to do it. This ain't going to be like this. And that's really what motivated me was what they call righteous indignation around my brothers. But the other part was I said, now, if I'm saying to the loving and I don't have this information, I know my people don't know about these women and these children. So I felt compelled I need to arm myself with this information and take it back to my community and tell them, look, among us, this is not a gay thing. This is a, a disease, and it's infecting every sector of our community, and I'm going to try to give you as much information as I can. And my heart was broken because I had begun to lose friends especially friends in New York who were from the business, and then some friends out here. And uh, basically what I wanted to do was, since I come from a progressive theological background, I said, well, the thing I could do is invite people in, and I at least could share with them that there are Christians that don't ascribe to reading those scriptures in that antiquated way. I don't believe that that's the truth of a loving God. And I least can share that information with people. So that's really what my plan was. I had people meet me on Mondays over a friend's house. First it was my house, but it outgrew the little space I had in my little one bedroom. So a friend had a house, a female, a lesbian woman, and so we would go, they would meet me at her house, and I would just share different ways that people in Christendom saw the Bible and read those scriptures and didn't read them in accusatory or condemning ways. And I just wanted to share that with people. And out of that, I said to them one week, look, I'm visiting, I'm trying to find out who has this new virus, and at least I want to go visit them or what have you. You better hush up that noise. And uh, 